Okay, all right, we are live. Hi, everybody. Um, let me know if you can see me. I'll start screen sharing in a second, but I just wanted to pop on and say hi first. Um, I'm going to pop in the chat. Let me know um, if you can hear me. And if you can hear me, let me know what your name is and where you are tuning in from and primarily what you do in your business if you do weddings or portraits and if you are full-time or part-time. Just want to get a gauge of where we are at here. Hi, Sean. Hi, Jen. Hi, Jade. Hi, Floor. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, <laughs> Lee, glad you found the right link. And yeah, so you guys, I'll, I'll say this again when a few more people hop on, but Bridget is my project manager. She is in the chat box. And if you have a question, feel free to pop into the chat box and ask your question at any point. And Bridget will either flag it if I'm going to answer it at the end, or she will be able to answer probably a lot of questions too while we're going on. Um, most of the time, I feel like I probably proactively will answer the questions throughout the um, content. But if I don't, there will be time at the end for q and I'm going to try to keep all of the Q&A till the end just so I can get the content to you as quick as possible. Um, I have a lot, so definitely have your notebooks ready. Um, and then I'm just going to pop in. Um, Lee, Florida Accounting, full-time. Awesome. Shannon from Oklahoma. Sean from Topeka, part-time portraits and barrel races. Oh my gosh, cool. My best friend lives in Kansas. Wedding videographer from New Jersey. Awesome. Lee. Brand strategy freelancer, Jen. Cool. Portraits, weddings, babies, families, weddings, families, children, seniors. Awesome. Thank you guys. I'm going to screen share and let me know. Can you guys now see my slides? And there will be, just so you guys know, there's going to be a replay as well. So if you do have to hop off early, Bridget is going to be sending out the replay email um, right after the recording is all done. So hopefully you guys can see my slides. Hopefully the signal is okay. We are having a storm right now. Unfortunately, it's like pouring outside. So hopefully my signal, my internet stays okay. I have all of my browsers closed. Um, and additionally, the replay, usually if it is freezing, the replay usually does not see any skips or lags. And if you are having trouble connecting, just refresh the browser and you'll be okay. So it, all of those housekeeping things being out of the way, I am going to get started. So you guys are here because you are interested in learning workflows and streamlining your business. So this is going to be about an hour to 90 minute workshop on workflows. And we're going to talk about simple steps to transform or create your workflows if you have not ever created them before from hot mess to hyper efficient. And our goal is to help you stop losing time, losing clients, losing money. And I am super pumped you guys are here. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to hang out with me this Wednesday. So if you don't know who I am, if this is your first time coming across any of my content or we don't follow each other on Instagram or Facebook, um, my name is Laura. I am a wedding brand and portrait photographer out of northern New Jersey. And in 2016, 2015 into 2016, I started accidentally coaching on workflows and systems because I was really coming from this place of burnout as I went full time in my business as a photographer. And I ended up creating all these workflows and systems that really helped me save a ton of time. And then all of my friends started asking me how I did it. And 
I always say I'm this accidental business coach and accidental system strategist that just became really obsessed with helping people have time freedom and work-life balance and grow successful and profitable businesses without working around the clock. So let me know if you have ever said any of these things. And just as a caveat to you guys, it is way more fun for me the more engagement there is in the comments so definitely talk back pop in say yes answer the questions if i have questions for you guys and there's also going to be a little assessment that we do throughout together so definitely engage in the comments it just makes it feel like it's a two-way conversation so let me know if you have ever thought one of these things to yourself work-life balance is a unicorn it doesn't exist I'm drowning. I'm so busy. I can never catch up. My business is taking so much time away from my family. Or if I just had a few more hours in each day or week. And the last one, I never get to just shut off. And then I would love for you guys to type a yes in the comments if any of these sound better than your current reality. Number one, you're not working around the clock anymore and you have tons of new free time to spend with your family. It's the middle of busy season and you've managed to cut your post-production time in half. Your inbox is full of five-star testimonials from over-the-moon clients. You're making more money while working less. (laughs) Flora said I need a day with 36 hours. You're actually not a frazzled, stressed out, overwhelmed, hot mess. And dare I say you actually have work-life balance. And you're not making personal sacrifices for the sake of your business. But most of all, you have workflows and systems in your business that make running it as easy as pie. (laughs) And I hope you guys can appreciate a good gift game because I'm obsessed with this pickle me and I love this gift so much. So I knew I had to get in the presentation. So I want you guys to know that all of that, the balance, the time freedom, the business success without sacrificing your life is all possible. And it's all I've totally been in the position where I just wish I could have 36 hours in a day or 10 days in a week to get everything done. But what is possible when I teach everything I'm going to teach you today is you can do everything that you're currently doing in literally some some people have done it in a tenth of the time once they've gotten their business streamlined and created workflow. So I'm really excited to dive in. All of this is possible and so much more. So I'm pumped to bring all of this to you today. And just so you know, at the very end, if you are a photographer and you are joining us, my signature flagship course, Photography Workflow Mastery, the 2.0 version of it will be reopening for enrollment. I'll pop the link in the chat just in case anybody needs to leave early and you want to check it out. But that is what we are going to chat about at the very end. It is an eight module video based course that serves as your one stop shop for doing what you love faster and easier. And I will tell you way more about it later, but I just wanted to tell you that that'll be coming. Keep your eyes out for it because this course has been a game changer for so many people. So I'm really excited to share that with you later. But first, I want to share a little bit about my story because I feel like now as this workflow and system strategist, there's just this perception that I have my stuff together all of the time and that I've always been organized and I just came out of the womb as this organization freak. But that was completely not the case. And that's actually why I became a workflow and system strategist, because I was not always organized. I was actually pulling all nighters pretty frequently. I was exhausted. I was burning the candle at both ends. I was never seeing my family, my husband or my friends because I was working 12 to 16 hour days, calling, editing, blogging and doing everything I needed to do for my photography business. And I was capturing all these amazing memories for other people, but I was barely making any memories of my own because I was always working. So if that sounds familiar, let me know in the comments. I his office because he could tell that I was really burnt out, burning the candle at both ends. And he could tell because I showed up in pajamas that day to work. 
And he called me into his office and I just like instantly started crying. And on the outside, my business looked really great. I had clients, people were booking. I was getting ready to go full time with my dream job of being a photographer. If you guys lost me, jumped and I was burning out really fast. And I was working this day job as a photo editor for eight hours a day. And then I would go home and I would edit all of my own work for another eight hours. And I was on this constant train of hustle. And I was sacrificing so much of my personal life for the sake of trying to get my business off the ground and like really trailblaze this. And I can tell you from personal experience that 12 to 16 hour days is not what dream jobs are made of. And so my boss came in on that day and he gave me permission to quit. And so that was October 15th, 2015. And my last day at that job as a photo editor was the day before Halloween. I still remember being really upset to miss the Halloween party. But for a split second, I felt free until I got home and I realized that my to-do list was never ending. And I had an editing queue that had 19 weddings and sessions in it that still needed to be delivered. And I just thought, nobody told me that running a business was going to be all of this admin work and editing and calling and blogging and all of these other things and like 10% photography. And I knew that if I was going to continue loving and being passionate about photography, that things need So that winter, so I was going like fall into winter 2016, I sat at home and I focused on one thing, and that was creating workflows and systems to get every part of my business streamlined. So I ended up taking everything I had learned from my photo editing job, from my even more previous job of being a project manager at a design and construction firm. I took everything I learned from both of those places and took those skills and utilized them and put them into this workflow and system that I could repeat over and over for every single client. And Later that year, I put this workflow and system to the test and I had 28 weddings, 35 engagement sessions, 12 portrait and brand sessions, which was more than double the years before. And what happened was I was able to double my rates and my income. My referrals went up by 1200% and I ended up having more free time than ever. I actually took 58 days off in 2017 and then continued to take two months worth of sabbaticals in 2018 as well. And to this day, now we have booked from this workflow and system, and you'll learn how it has become a marketing tool in my business, I have been able to book over 300,000 in revenue from referrals alone without a single dollar going to paid advertising. And I also barely post on social media, just as a caveat, I'm not like sitting here every single day posting on social media. I'm actually quite bad at social media. Um, So over, 300 grand in referrals without going to paid advertising, taking time off and really taking my wedding workflows from at least a month to six weeks delivering weddings to down to a week to deliver weddings. And literally I photographed my best friend's maternity session yesterday and I had it delivered within an hour of shooting it. And so in a year's time from doing all these workflows and systems, I was able to bring in over six figures in just my first year. But the best part about it was that I actually got my life back and I got the passion back for my business. And that is what I now am on a mission to do to help hundreds of photographers and creatives get their life back so they can spend time with their family while running their business. So today we'll go through my four part framework, overwhelm to organize framework to help you create and transform your workflows. We're going to talk about where most business owners have leaky holes in their business that are costing them time, clients, and money. We're going to talk about two important systems that you need to be organized in your business. 
And this crazy stat, the reason why most business owners without this one tool are losing 79% of bookings. This is mind blowing. Can't wait to tell you. And the areas I see most business owners going wrong when trying to set up workflows and systems. And we will take all of that tied up in a bow in this awesome framework that is going to help you streamline every part of your business. But before we do that, I am going to give you guys a link to this assessment. So what we're going to do is as I go through each stage, I want you guys to follow along with me and assess where you are at during that stage in the framework. And then you'll kind of start to see where you can improve your time, your efficiency, your productivity, all of that. And so I'm going to share that in the chat box and that should be shared now. And you can also see that link right there. And then at the very end, I'll also share a link to a workbook. So if your hand ends up cramping up from taking too many notes, then you can download the workbook. I tried to make it succinct and take most of the information that's in here and put it into a workbook for you so you don't have to like write down verbatim what's on every slide. So before we dive into this framework, I want to talk about the foundation of your business as it stands right now. So I want to talk to you about this concept of a leaky bucket. And I think we can kind of all visualize it, but here's a photo for visual reference as well. So I want you to imagine that you are trying to fill a bucket with water and you keep losing water because there's like four to five holes in your bucket. And you try to fix these holes with some duct tape and it temporarily works, but as the tape wears down, water starts leaking out of the seams and the process happens all over again. And the truth is most of our businesses, if not all of our businesses, have holes in our bucket in some way, shape, or form. And these holes end up causing us to lose time, lose clients, lose money, lose referrals, and lose work-life balance. And a good workflow and system is going to be the way that you fill all of those holes. And we're going to dive into this concept more and more as we go through the four phases of the framework. But even just as an example from this week, we made a change to the inquiry workflow recently in my wedding photography business. I felt like as I was scaling up in price, I needed to keep tweaking that. And we ended up um, booking four new clients in one week after a few weeks of not getting a response to our email. And so just that one change resulted in close to $30,000 in wedding sales. And so that was this huge hole in our bucket that I needed to be aware of and make changes to. And that's part of my workflow and part of my system. And so what our goal is in this workshop and with our workflows is to fix all of these holes all together. Because instead of burning out, of losing time, of losing clients and losing money because we're not booking or we're inefficient or we're disorganized, what if instead, tell me if this sounds better, we can make more money while working less, while being able to actually take a vacation without our laptop. And we worked with clients that referred us over and over again while having money to sustain our business long-term without the constant hustle. Tell me if that sounds any better than the current reality of most of our businesses where we have these things that are leaking out. Um, so just drop a yes or drop a heart in the comments if that sounds better to you. And we are going to dive into exactly how to do that. So it all starts, I'm going to take a quick sip of water. It all is going to start with your workflow foundation. And simply put, a workflow is a step-by-step -step process of every single thing you do for a client's project. This is going to be everything on the front client-facing side and the back end. And a great workflow needs to be repeatable for every client. It should be easy to follow. It should be automated or partially automated in something like a client management system like HoneyBook, Debsado, stuff like that. It should do the thinking for you, which means that it is partially automated around due date triggers. It should be consistent 
and easy to train somebody on. Therefore, it should be detailed enough that steps aren't missed or forgotten, and we'll go into that a little bit. And it should make you more efficient. Everything needs to have due dates throughout this workflow, and it should be valuable for both you in terms of making you more efficient, giving you time freedom, and it should be valuable for your clients. So what should be included in your workflow? As a caveat, a workflow is not just a list of tasks, and it's also just not a couple of emails. It is everything you do from beginning of your client reaching out, sending through that contact form on your website. It is everything from that moment all the way through archiving your client's project. So there are 10 things that need to be included in every service-based workflow. And I wanna dive into this in two parts. So part one is the back-end workflow components. And these are chapter headings and stages. I'll go into this in a little more deep detail in a second. They are tasks, subtasks, due dates, and assignees. So your chapter headings or stages are really the chapters of your workflow. So as an example, you might have the inquiry chapter, the booking chapter, the onboarding chapter, the pre-engagement session chapter, shooting the engagement session, post-production for the engagement session, um, pre-wedding planning, all of that. So these are your big milestones where things are going to then fall into. And then we're going to have tasks. So these are going to be anything that you need to do. So an example, um, it's basically anything that you need to like manually do. It's not something that templatized. So as an example for photography, it would be editing would be a task and importing into photo mechanic would be a task. Setting up the SEO for your blog would be a task. And then we're going to have subtasks. So actually blogging is this overarching task, right? It's more of this like big umbrella task that might have 15 subtasks under it. You need to title it. You need to blog stomp your images. You need to do the SEO, do the alt text, pick a featured image. You need to write the blog. So there's all these subtasks. And that's what really helps a workflow, especially if you are delegating to somebody else, it makes it very easy to follow. Because when I heard my now assistant, my creative assistant and studio manager, if I had said, just like, go blog this wedding, she probably would have missed a lot of things because I didn't have it mapped out with subtasks. So that's really important. Just for our own brains too, we wanna reduce the amount of manual thinking that our brains need to do because it actually costs us a lot of energy and that can really hinder your productivity as well. So tasks and subtasks, two very important things. And then like I said, everything will have a due date and assignees just means that you know every single task, you know who on your team does what. So that's our part one, these back end tasks. And we're gonna go into exactly how this is all built out in the framework. Part two is the client facing workflow components. So this is going to mean your client education and, the, and that can be in the form of a blog post, a newsletter, a regular email. It can be a what to wear guide, a wedding guide, a pricing guide, any of that. And then we're going to have all email communication and this should be proactive. So I'm always on the side of answer your clients questions before they have them <laughs> party. And then we're going to have all our client documents. <coughs> so this is going to be our questionnaires, our pricing guides, um, any timelines, anything that is going to help you build a relationship with your client or give them a better service. This is going to be built into our workflow. Any client gifts that you need to send and any client meetings. So it's almost like these different love languages of client experience. So you have client meetings, which is going to be, um, you know, quality time. And you have gifts. Gift giving, obviously, is one. Client education is like acts of service. Email communication it can be like words of affirmation. Um, and then client documents would also just be like acts of service and stuff like that. 
as well. So these is the part two, the client facing side. And I'm going to give you guys an example of this in a little bit that I think will really drive this concept home for you. But what I want to jump into is this framework. So we'll have the overwhelmed to organized framework where all of these components are going to come together. So let me know if you have ever said something like this. Building workflows and templates seems too hard and I don't know where to start. Just throw a yes in the comments if that's something you've ever said. I'm going to take a quick sip of water. And if you have said that, this is where to start. Phase one is the build phase. And this is all about building out your actual workflow. So the build phase goal is to have a step-by-step -step process mapped out in checklist form of everything you do from the moment somebody inquires all the way through delivering your service. So maybe your gallery for photography clients or an album or your brand strategy, whatever it is. So the build phase goal is to have a step-by-step -step process in checklist form of everything you do. And there are five steps to the build phase. The first step is writing out each section of your workflow. So like I said, sections aren't tasks. They're like the chapters of your workflow where all of your tasks, your subtasks, your emails all exist throughout the different stages of your workflow. So already gave some examples of that, but it would be your inquiry process, client onboarding, stuff like that, your big milestones. So that is step one of the build phase. Just outline those chapters. Following that is step two, where you're going to go and start to fill in every single chapter with all of the back end workflow components that have to happen and the client facing components that we just went over. So all those 10 pieces are going to start to get filled into each section, but not every chapter or section is going to have all 10 of these things. So as an example, in your client onboarding chapter. You might have emails that you need to send them. You may have a task to send a proposal. You may have a questionnaire to get to know your client. You might have a preliminary timeline to send. You may, and then you'll have all the due dates, right? You're always going to have these back end components of due dates and assignees. Make sure you're assigning things. But you need to figure out what things need to happen in every chapter. And then once you have your workflow written out, you're going to be able to go through and determine when every single task and subtask needs to be completed with a more tangible due date. So you're going to want to be writing everything in your workflow in the order that it's happening, just in like checklist form, just like you're writing a to-do list, but in the, in a to-do a to-do list for the next two years of working with this, um, working with this client. Um, Katie, I can see your chat. Um, so hopefully it is working. Um, so step three, adding the due dates for everything is going to be based off of three major things. So the first one is when a previous task is complete. The second one is when a workflow is activated. So this might be something like needing to send a welcome gift or the previous task would be kind of a domino effect, right? If you're a photographer and you are, you need to edit your photos, you can't do that until you import the photos. So that's a domino effect. So I call those dependent tasks. And then we have when a workflow is activated. So these will be like things like for sending a contract, a proposal, a welcome gift, stuff like that. And then we'll have a due date based off the project date. So it can be before or after the project date. So that's step three. And I'm going to have a screenshot for you guys of what this actually looks like. Step four is to assign each task. So once you have this whole big, long, long, long checklist, like literally my wedding workflow is 15 pages in a Google Doc it becomes much easier to go through and figure out who is going to do every single step. So you can determine whether it's going to be you, a subcontractor, an independent contractor, somebody on your team, 
an outside company. So this can really just be like you color coding. Like if you want to print out your Google Doc or Word Doc where you're making this workflow, you can go out and you can highlight different colors of who's going to do what. So I literally, that's what I did. I color coded who I was going to outsource certain tasks to and when it happens in the process. And then finally, our last build step is adding in a wow factor to your client experience through every single chapter. So in your inquiry chapter, I want you to think about what can you do to wow the client? Can you call them? Can you send a video message? Can you send a text message? Can you send a beautiful welcome guide? So you're going to do that for every chapter. And that's why we need to map out the chapters first and why this is the last step is we're going to go through and see where we can add better client touch points, where we can bring more value, a better experience, a more personal connection, where you can surprise and delight your clients, what questions you can answer to make their experience better, and what parts you might have less communication with them that you can just reach out to stay top of mind. So this can be in the form of a gift, in an email, in a blog post, in a wedding guide, like it can be anything how you are adding value to their client experience um, and definitely make that personalized to your business and your brand. But it can be something as simple as reaching out in the middle of their wedding planning, like six months out before the wedding and be like, hey, just wanted to see like how life is, how is everything going? And you can build that into your workflow based off of their wedding date so that you don't even have to think about your client experience manually. And as a note on this last step, it is so important because your client experience can either be a reason your clients are raving about you to all of their friends or the reason why your business will continue to be a marketing army of one. So I think it is an obvious answer which one you would rather be. And I really want to drive this home with an example of going to a restaurant. So restaurant A only has back-end tasks and restaurant B has all 10 components. So they have the client-facing tasks and the back-end tasks. And I want you to envision, you can envision your business type, so your photography business or whatever it is you do. I want you to envision this example with your business. Restaurant A and restaurant B have the exact same level of food goodness, but restaurant A takes forever to bring you water. There's no fluffy warm rolls on the table. It takes a long time to get seated. You constantly have to flag the waiter or the waitress down to get more water, drink, utensils, napkins, etc. They don't ever check in on how your food is doing ever, and maybe you actually needed more water or you needed a napkin or you needed extra salad dressing, but they never came over to check in on how things were. And that really started to hinder your experience. And it also took forever to get the food once you actually ordered it versus restaurant B. So restaurant B actually educated you on the menu and the wine that goes best with your selected entree. There were warm, fluffy rolls on the table. They immediately brought you to your seat and they already have their water filled for you. They also have been filling your water and your wine as soon as it starts to get low without you ever needing to ask. They check in frequently to see how you're doing, how you're enjoying the food, and if they can get you anything else. And they surprise you with free dessert at the end of the night because you happened to mention it was your anniversary when you made the reservation. And then lastly, of course, it does not take forever to get the food. And so restaurant A and restaurant B, they have the same product, but a completely different experience. And if you are a photographer, you are in the wedding industry or in the service-based industry, if you are only relying on your portfolio for people to talk about you, you are literally losing out on potentially six to 18 months of working with somebody that they could be referring you. Because if these restaurants were only relying on food, that's great. But we know how Yelp works and we know that 
reviews are not just based on your actual product because I'm sure that you take amazing photos, you create amazing brand strategy, you're an amazing accountant, right? But if you are solely relying on that work and you're not giving any client experience and building these client-facing workflow components into your system, then you're losing out on tons of potential referrals clients and therefore money in your business. And then you just have to be on this constant hustle wheel mentality. And that's actually why I don't post on social media because I'm always booked out from referrals. I've been booked out since I went full time in 2015 and I'm so grateful for that. And it is because of this incredible client experience that I've built into my workflow. So to wrap up this build phase, I just want you guys to meet Austin. She's one of my workflow students in the course. She's also one of my dear friends and she is as type B creative as they come. And she said to me, I'm flipping amazed how easy it really was to do. Following Laura's system and workflow pulls the emotion out of it immensely for somebody who is scatterbrained like me. I've never felt more productive and efficient after a wedding. By Tuesday night for a Saturday wedding, I had done everything in the past that had taken me weeks to do. Everything is organized, prepped, and since I outsource my editing after my blog images, I have no to-dos with this wedding until it gets sent back to me this weekend. I've never felt less stressed three days after a wedding ever. Also, my clients are so ecstatic with the experience and their blog already being up. So Austin was one of the first people to ever test out the course and my systems and my workflows. And this is really a snapshot of what this looks like in the build phase. So this is just a snapshot of part of my booking section of my wedding workflow. So you can see that there are tasks, there are emails that need to be sent, and there are due dates within here. And this document was built on a Google Doc that later will get transferred into a CRM. And that's something that we'll definitely be going over in part three of the framework. So before we jump into part two, I would love to have you guys pull up that file that I shared of the workflow assessment. And we are going to write down our scores in the chat box for part one. So essentially every single one of these check boxes is one point. And don't feel bad if you are at a zero or a one or a two or a low score, because that is why you're here. And that is why I am teaching you all of these things so that you can have a full score. So number one is I have a written workflow for every client project I do in my business. One point if your workflow includes every task and subtask on the back end that you do from inquiry through completion of your service. One point if you have due dates on everything so that you always know when things need to get done and these can be automated in your CRM. One point if you know all of the emails and questionnaires you need to send. One point if your workflow includes a tremendous amount of value for your clients which helps you book out your calendar. And one last point, if you are clear on who is responsible for what task and you have a clear plan for what can be outsourced. So I know there's a little bit of a delay, so I will move on to the next slide and then just let me know what your score is. So this will be on a scale of one to six. And all of this is going to bring us into phase two. And I want to know if you guys have ever said this one, I don't have enough time to get organized in my business. That is a huge limiting belief that I hear from so many people. But according to my own data and Fast Company, 70% of all business owners and CEOs work is wasted because it is not streamlined. And that is why phase two of our framework is so important. And <laughs> zero for Floor, zero for Hannah, and two for Deanne, awesome. Okay, so we're gonna fix this, you guys. Phase two is our streamlined phase. So once we have built the checklist foundation of our workflow and we've completed the build phase, we have to do this in order, we can go into the streamlined phase, which is absolutely vital to plug 
the holes in your bucket that are wasting time. So our streamlined phase goal is to make every step in your workflow as efficient as possible through the use of templates, repeatable systems, and apps so you can stop wasting time reinventing the wheel for every project. And streamline phase has three steps. And this is where our time is mostly going is the streamline phase. But the good thing is with everything I'm teaching you today, you only have to do it one time and then it is done forever and you never have to do it again. So the streamline phase step one is going to take a little bit of legwork. This is where you are going to make and write all of your templates, which includes email templates, questionnaires, brochures, contracts, proposals, invoices, and packages. So if you guys have not dug into CRM systems yet, all of them are going to have a place where you can add templates in. You can add email templates, you can add contract templates, proposal templates, and we want to create a template library within our CRM that has everything we would ever need to send our clients and everything that we built into that build phase. And I can kind of share that screenshot again. We have this build phase you can see in blue. It says send email wedding. Thank you for booking that blue highlighted text becomes a template that we then need to write. So after this build phase is written out and we can see oh, I need to write this email, this email, this email, this email, I need to send these questionnaires, we're able to go in and actually create those things. So that's step one. Step two is to create systems for all of the tasks that we need to do. So when we went through the workflow components, there was really these like back end tasks and subtasks that were manual to do's, and then the front end client facing side was a lot of templates. But for all the back end stuff, we need to create systems for how to do it. So if you're a photographer, you may need to create systems for creating timelines, family formal lists, collecting vendor info, post-production, blogging, outsourcing. And we want to make sure that our systems are building a repeatable framework for this task that is going to make it as efficient as possible. So part of it could be creating a template, but really a system is going to be a way of doing things that you can repeat over and over without ever reinventing the wheel. So that's step two. So every task, figure out how to make it as efficient as possible. And then part three of this phase is to figure out what tasks you can use apps for to make your life easier. So things like scheduling meetings, you can use Calendly, you can use the HoneyBook schedule, or you can use Acuity or the Dubsado scheduler so that you don't have to go back and forth via email with people. You can use things like MileIQ for tracking mileage. That should be a task in your workflow to write out the mileage for your wedding, for your portrait session, for your meeting, whatever it is, but that can be done with an app. And then scheduling social media. You obviously do not need to be posting manually to Instagram, to Facebook. You can write one blog post. You can repurpose it to be your content creation for all your Instagram, your Instagram stories, your Facebook posts, your Facebook album. So you want to figure out how you can really create these cornerstone moments in your workflow to repurpose things and create systems. And then you also want to figure out where you can use apps to make your life easier. So as a juxtaposition here, we have photographer A who is not streamlined and they are writing emails for 12 to 14 hours per week and per wedding. They're taking about five hours to send client documents. They're taking up to eight hours to create timelines and two hours for family formal lists. It's taking about an hour to collect vendor info and three hours to do other pre-wedding prep tasks. And the average is 18 to 30 hours for post-production on a wedding. It's taking them about three hours to blog and four hours roughly to schedule and have meetings throughout the process. That means that photographer A, this is a wedding photographer, is working 50 to 70 hours per wedding. 
and they actually have this huge leaky hole that I hope you can see that they are losing out on about 30 to 50 hours lost per wedding. So at 20 weddings a year at $5,000, they're making $100,000, which at roughly 60 hours per wedding, that's 1,200 hours worked plus all their de business development hours and all of their shooting hours. And that's amounting to $83 per billable hour of just the back end stuff. That does not include shooting time. So you add in another 10 hours for a wedding and engagement session, and you're really cutting down on your billable hours. And that does not even include all of the other business tasks that you need to do. And essentially, this is what photographer A is doing. They are throwing money out the window. And a crazy, crazy stat by CMO Council found that at least $1 trillion is lost by companies every single year due to mismanaged tasks resulting in wasted productivity and lead management. So drop a line in the comments and say like, hell no, if you do not wanna be photographer A, throwing all that money out the window, throwing all of that time out the window. Because the truth of the matter is your growth is inhibited when your capacity is maxed out. And this is why this is so important. Um, and here I would love to just like share a story of one of my students and one of my coaching clients. She shoots Christmas mini sessions and she used to shoot 50 mini sessions in like a one weekend period. And she would work for weeks to get those delivered and to also plan the event. And she was really at capacity doing about 50 mini sessions for $100 a pop. So it was about $5,000 for this mini session event that she was taking in in gross revenue. And we created workflows and systems a few years ago to help her get more streamlined, get more organized, get the back end of planning figured out. Bridget has actually helped her with it as well. And we were able to help her create systems that she could scale this event. And so now instead of capping herself at 50 sessions, she, COVID pending, she was on pace to be shooting 1200 sessions this year. And so she now was able to create this six figure revenue stream from a Christmas mini session event. And last year she did 800 sessions and was able to deliver them all within nine days after the event ended. So she was able to exponentially grow her business, her clients, her revenue without working around the clock to do so. And that is what happens when you are streamlined like photographer B. And so in our wedding photography example, photographer B is writing emails for an hour per wedding because everything is templated. They're taking maybe an hour to send client documents because everything is templated. They're taking 20 minutes to create timelines because they have a template and all they need to do is know the ceremony time and then it's just plug and play from there. It's taking 15 minutes for family formals because there's a template. Collecting vendor info is like 10 minutes. Other pre-wedding prep is like an hour. Post-production takes five to 12 hours because every task is streamlined in a system. Blogging takes an hour because there's a system for how to write a wedding blog in 15 minutes or less. And scheduling and having meetings is cut in half to two hours because everything is streamlined and automated using apps. And so photographer B for the same amount of weddings is working 13 to 20 hours per wedding versus the 50 to 70 that photographer A was doing. They're losing zero hours in this bucket. And at 20 weddings a year at 5,000, and again, I know these might not be your prices, but we're doing easy math here. 20 weddings a year at 5,000, they're making the same as photographer A, but they are able to do it in only 300 hours a year versus 1,200. So they have some options here. They can either still work 1,200 hours a year and quadruple the amount of work they take on. They can start an associate team. They can use that time to learn in-person sales and take more sales meetings, or they can just 
cut down their work hours by one fourth. The thing is that you get to decide what to do with this saved time. And that's something that I would actually love to ask you guys. Um, I would love to know what you would do if you had 900 extra hours in your year. Would you take on more work because now your capacity is not maxed out? Would you hire an associate team? Would you take a sabbatical? Would you go to all of your kids' soccer games? Let me know in the comments what you would do. I would love to hear more about your life and your goals. And I personally love this gif of Amy Sudeikis. She says, oh, weekends are a little bit tough because I'm busy with my free time. And I think here is a really good place to meet one of my other students, Laura. She said she was, so she was a bride. She was planning her own wedding and she was a wedding photographer. And she hopped into my course, Photography Workflow Mastery. And she said, module one alone is worth every penny of the full course because she was able to A, book a wedding within a week of jumping into the course from the inquiry templates that are optional to get with the course. So she had all of my email templates and she booked a bride. She used Calendly to book this meeting while she was on vacation. And she was able to book a wedding that actually she was on vacation in Napa. She was able to pay for the wedding and pay for the vacation in Napa with that booking. And she said that she was almost about to call off her wedding and just go to the courthouse with her fiance because she had no time to plan her own wedding. But she said after implementing all of these things, she now jumps out of bed. She couldn't wait to start her day where three weeks ago there was nothing but anxiety attacks. And she ended up having the actual wedding, um, being able to use templates, save time, and actually enjoy her business again. And Hannah said, fold more laundry and take a vacation with your four kids. Yes. Amen. So let's assess your part two score. So let me know in the comments what you scored here. So one point for each. Number one, you have email templates set up for all emails you regularly send your clients. Number two, you have client education emails set up in your workflow that allow you to give your clients a great experience sharing your knowledge with them. Number three, you can deliver weddings in a week and portrait sessions in a matter of hours. Number four, you have processes in place for repurposing your content. Number five, you have blogging templates that you follow so that you can write blogs in 15 minutes or less. Number six, you've created questionnaire templates, brochures, invoice proposal, and they are integrated into your CRM so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel ever. You have admin tasks that are streamlined and take up minimal time, and you're using productivity apps that help you save time and automate the day-to-day -day, um, so that you can spend more time on the income-producing tasks. So let me know what your score is there. It is on a scale of one to eight. And as you tally that up, I'm going to jump into phase three, which is automate. This is where all of the magic starts to happen. Hannah, you are at a two. That is awesome. Four, four. Awesome. Amazing. And phase three is automate. And this is going to be where we really need to dive into these softwares. And there's really two essential types of softwares that every business owner needs to get automated and organized. The first one is a client relationship management software, otherwise known as a CRM. This is going to be your HoneyBook, 17 Hats, Dubsado, Tave, all of those things. And then you're going to also probably want a task management software like ClickUp, Trello, or Asana for all of the non-client workflow related tasks. So all of the backend business stuff. And the goal of the automate phase is to cut your manual work hours down by up to 75% and run a business that does not run you without needing to hire a team. So essentially, we're going to take everything that we created in phase one and phase two, the streamlined phase, aka all of our templates, 
all of our workflow checklists and we're going to put it into a software system that can do the thinking for us based on your client's project date. So let me know if you've ever thought this, um, but automation feels impersonal. I feel like I hear that a lot, um, that people are so afraid to automate things because it feels impersonal. But the reality is that automating your workflows for the process and manual heavy workload tasks gives you more time to connect with your clients because manual operations like hunting for contact info or sending emails and documents and entering data can be automated or eliminated. And automation across your sales portion, your service, and your marketing is going to free you up so that you can spend more time talking with prospective clients and strengthening relationships with your existing one, which is both going to move the needle forward in your business. So the automate phase tangibly looks like plugging all of your templates into your CRM. That's step one. And then implementing your workflow checklist into your CRM after all of your templates are loaded, which is very important. You can't create a workflow with send email if you don't have the template loaded first. And then you are going to plug anything that you want to go into ClickUp or your task management software, you're gonna plug all of those workflows in and I'll have screenshots to share with you guys. And then you're gonna save a boatload of time. That's your last step here. So doing this phase, which is really essential in order for all of this to work, is going to help you book more clients by setting up a streamlined and solid inquiry and follow-up workflow with automations to like stay on top of your inquiries and leads. It's going to give your existing clients an incredible experience no matter how busy you are because your communication is proactive and it's partially automated or fully automated in your CRM based off their project date. It'll help you efficiently use your time because you'll never have to wonder what to do for each client and you'll walk into work with your daily agenda created for you every day. It'll help you increase your referrals by delivering an incredible client experience It'll reduce your overwhelm in every area of your business because you're able to complete tasks without barely lifting a finger, and it'll give you more time for your life. And like we talked about, a more efficient business means a more scalable business, a more profitable business. So what this automate phase actually looks like is, is this. It's um, This is a screenshot of my hunting book. This is um, the part of my onboarding phase. So you can see I have a task for printing the contract um, with the package and payment info on it, just in case I'm, I ever lose anything in HoneyBook or I'm not using it. I like to have a printed copy of all my contracts. And then I send an email with vendor recommendations. So you can see here, it says wedding vendor recommendations. When I click on that, that's going to pop up with a template already created. And you can see I have due dates here. So this is my trigger, zero days after previous step is complete. And then approve before sending is my um, the automation section. So you can either choose to send it automatically or approve it before sending. And so that's an example of what this looks like once you put it into your CRM. It's all, every single backend and client facing task will be in there. And then you have to apply it to every project. But after it's applied, this is going to be what you do every single day. You you like literally, you only have to create this workflow once. You apply it to all your clients and then every day your business to-dos will be automated in a task management section of your CRM from then on. And it's all based around these due date triggers that we created. So you can create as many workflow templates as you want for your different service types and then apply it to your clients and everything will be dynamically created based off your project date, the workflow start date or the previous step, whatever your due date trigger was. And HoneyBook or whatever CRM you're using, most of them work pretty similarly. They're able to create a task list for you every single day for every single project all at once so that you know 
what action needs to be taken on every project and the templates already built in. So you can see here, it says approve questionnaire, timeline questionnaire. All I have to do is hit that view edit button and my email and my questionnaire template are going to pop up and all I have to do is hit send because it's already connected to Demi and Dan's client project and it's going to pop up on October 14th. It popped up and said, okay, it's time to send this because based off of their wedding date, that due date is coming up within their workflow. And so HoneyBook or your CRM is reading this computers are so smart <laughs> it's reading this and it's popping up and all you have to do is hit view edit and it'll pop off and send so every single day you are just logging in and you're doing these things and all of your admin work is done for the day and you know exactly what to do so even your tasks like culling editing blogging all of that can also be built into here but i will also show you an example. This is an example of my ClickUp workflow. This is a task management or project management software. There's no communication availability here. You, like you can't send emails. There's no contracts. There's no client portal. Like your clients aren't in here at all. This is just like a glorified to-do list in a more organized way. And so we use ClickUp for all of our post-production for weddings, portraits, and albums, just because we have a team and it's easier to delegate and change due dates on the workflows within ClickUp versus HoneyBook. But these used to be in HoneyBook. When I was a solopreneur, um, when I didn't have any team at all, we had our entire workflow in HoneyBook and so all my calling, all my editing, I knew exactly what had to be done across every single client. Now we just have a system that we check HoneyBook every day and we check ClickUp every day. And so if you are interested in both of those types of systems, this is how I use both. So wanted to explain what goes where. In your CRM, you will have your inquiry workflow, your booked workflow up until the wedding or session date, and you can also put post-production in there if you have no team. Then you'll also have your project management software. So this is your ClickUps, Asanas, Trellos, all of that. And this is where all of your internal business projects can go. You can put personal tasks in there. I literally have my grocery list in ClickUp. You can have course homework that you're taking. You can put your brain dumps in there. You can have your post-production workflows if you do have a team. It's just easier to delegate or your more flows because they're very scattered based off of approvals. And so I feel like this is where I get this limiting belief that using workflows and systems feels like it's going to cost a lot of money to get the software I need. But first off, systems like HoneyBook, they're like $17 a month for your first year. So it's like three coffees at Starbucks. And systems like ClickUp are free. So there's this limiting belief of not being willing to spend two to $400 a year on your business software, but it is potentially and realistically costing you thousands of dollars. Um, Salesforce, which is a CRM company, they found data that said without a CRM, 79% of all marketing leads or inquiries are never converted to sales because there's no good follow-up and communication system behind it. So I feel like everybody is worried about the cost of action, but nobody really considers the cost of inaction. But the good news is that this framework that I'm teaching you isn't limited to a paid system because there are free CRMs. HubSpot has a free version of CRM. I've never used it, um, but they have a free CRM. You can have workarounds and click up to do most of what I'm teaching you in this workshop. And while I do recommend that everybody should have a CRM with tools that are meant for your industry, all of this will work on any system, free or paid. It's not limited to just HoneyBook, just Dubsado. So if you're on a CRM and you don't want to switch CRMs or double pay, you don't have to. This can work in the CRM that you have as long as there are workflows and template tools available. And just another crazy report. I love data. Um, some reports show that inefficient workflows cost companies up to 30% of your revenue. So that is certainly a lot more than you would pay in an automation system that is going to help you avoid that inefficiency. And just to drive this section home, I want you guys to meet Gina, one of my students. And she said, 
she, so she finally implemented this and she said, I finally spent all day yesterday overhauling my workflow organization. I entered all of the steps in HoneyBook with your workflows, applied them to all my current projects, which was 14 weddings and other sessions. And I've gotten more done in the last three hours checking off my 98 tasks due today, which was only because she had just implemented it than I have in the last three weeks combined. Seriously, thank you, Laura. This is only the beginning of not struggling anymore. So I love that so much. And I would love to hear your guys' assessment for part three before we go into our final section. So one point each. Um, number one, I have a workflow built into my client management system. Number two, I can handle upwards of 100 clients at a time with ease. Number three, my workflows are consistent and repeatable for every client. My workflow due dates are all automated, so my CRM gives me a task list daily for what I need to get done for all my projects. I have my inquiry and booking process down to a T, so when a client inquires, a follow-up system is in place for people who don't answer, and my bookings are where I want them to be. I don't feel scattered or disorganized when it comes to managing all the other tasks for running my business. And lastly, things never slip through the cracks in my business because my systems are on lockdown. Let me know your score. I'm going to take a sip of water and then I'm going to jump into phase four, which is scale. Okay, floor. We are at zero, Shannon's a two, Deanne is a one. Awesome, this is why we are here, perfect. Okay, so phase four is a scale. This is our last phase in the framework. And this phase is totally optional. Um, it is highly recommended. If you don't wanna grow your business to like hiring people um, and you, prefer to be a solopreneur, that's 10,000% okay. You probably can skip this step. But if you want to free up your time to spend more time taking pictures or on the tasks in your business that you actually enjoy and the tasks that directly result in business growth, then this phase is vitally important. And the goal of the scale phase is to completely remove yourself from parts of your business that so that you can focus on more money making activities that will easily bring you to six figures and beyond. So this phase of the framework essentially has four steps, really two steps, but step one is to write out the standard operating procedures or the processes that somebody other than you can easily follow. So this is going to look like having written or a video form of how you do all of the tasks in your business. And then once you do that, you need to refocus your time on more income producing activities. This in turn is going to help you grow your revenue three times or more. This is what happened to me and will hopefully help you easily hit six figures in your photo business without working around the clock. And just a perfect example of what this looks like is this scene from Friends. This is just one of the best scenes to drive this home. If you are not a Friends fan, I will explain this episode. Monica is essentially trying to bake cookies like Phoebe's grandma used to, and she ends up going through 17 batches of cookies. She never gets it right until she asks Phoebe if she knows where her grandma got the recipe. And Phoebe says, Nestle to Hausa. And Monica freaks out and says, Nestle Toll House, Phoebe, was this the recipe on the back of the chocolate chip bag? And that is essentially what this phase is all about. Nestle Toll House took a recipe that they came up with that was working from them, that they were making these amazing, delicious cookies, and they put it on the back of a bag. The workflow is the ingredients. So you need your eggs, you need your flour, you need your sugar. And the system and the process was what to do with those ingredients. And this is what helped them really scale the cookie industry, right? Um, and so 
this is essentially what this phase is all about, is writing these processes. And scaling your business is all about being able to take on more work, grow your capacity, and increase your revenue without working exponentially more hours. So that is our phase four, and I would love to know your score here. So number one, I have processes set up in my business. So if I want to hire a team member, I can easily train them with little effort. Two, if something happened to me, an assistant, friend, or family member would easily be able to follow my processes to get the work done. Number three, I am confident I could take on double the amount of clients and still manage the workload easily. Number four, I'm working on only the parts of my business I love while a team member or subcontractor handles a bulk of the rest. And the last one, I'm able to focus most of my energy on the tasks that bring income into the business. So let me know what your score is for this one. And I think Sarah is the perfect person to meet here. Sarah first went through Photography Workflow Mastery, which is my course that I mentioned, and I'll tell you more about that in a few minutes. But Sarah was at one wedding in June when I ended up teaching my workflows, and she was in seven... She had 17 weddings booked by December. So June, one wedding, 17 weddings by December. And she said, um, I was at one wedding in June when Laura started teaching me her workflows, 17 weddings for the first week of December, not to mention all the time it saved me already. It takes me all of five minutes total to send five perfectly timed follow-up emails that brides actually read and then result book me within days. I'm about to start to implement the rest of it and I'm fully prepared for a huge rise in client referrals next year. And that testimonial was awesome, but was even more awesome is after a year of having all of this done and actually doing phase four, the scale part and writing processes out, she was able to hire her sister and her dad. And she said, now that it's all done and my business is a fine tuned, well oiled machine, it quite literally feels like I'm living in a state of blissful ecstasy. It feels strange to only need to work two days a week and be taking in a revenue of 85,000 plus a year, all while my clients are being educated, served well, and in a timely manner. Now my biggest question to Laura is what's next because I have all the time to dream and chase a whole new goal while easily managing my current one. So I love that. Just like give me an a- amen if that story from Sarah inspires you because I love this so much. Like working two days a week, making 85K plus a year and only doing the work that she actually loves in her business. Like sign me up all day for that. So this is what that organized, overwhelmed to organized framework is. And when you implement this framework, you will go from feeling like a hot mess in your business to a well-oiled machine. You will skyrocket your income, your bookings, and you will ultimately find freedom. That is my goal, you guys. And you will get to work on the parts of your business that you love while having time to spend with the people you love. You'll no longer suffer late nights, feeling overwhelmed, feeling frazzled, or that feeling like you can never catch up or you need 36 hours in the day. Ultimately, you will run a business that doesn't run you. And if you are still here, first of all, thank you. And I want you to know that I get it because when you signed yourself up to be a photographer, to be a creative, to be a business owner, you did not realize that you were also signing yourself up for this never ending to do list of things to learn and stuff to do because there are a million plates in the air at all times emailing, scheduling meetings, scheduling sessions, making timelines, calling, editing, blogging, accounting, social media, client consults, sending contracts, writing proposals, cleaning equipment, learning posing, mastering lighting, driving to and from sessions, photographing the sessions and weddings, and so much more. And when you multiply all of those things by the number of clients you have every year, it feels like your head might explode. And the truth is, without workflows, systems, and a good organizational framework, most days I feel like running a business feels like you're on this runaway zip line, arms flailing through the air, hoping you make it to the end without throwing up. And if all of those things 
I mentioned, do make your head want to explode. It is not your fault because the photography and creative industry puts so much emphasis on things like lighting and posing and marketing and editing and all of the external things that our client sees, but they put very little emphasis on the running a business part, which is the most important if you ask me. And when we try to do all of those things, we end up being stressed out, overwhelmed, overworked, and burnt out photographers because we're just piecing random processes and systems together that don't actually help us save any time. And unfortunately, that makes us miss out on a lot of our life. And what's worse is that many photographers end up burnt out completely. They lose their passion for their business and they give up. And the thing is, if you don't learn how to run your business smarter, then you're kind of setting yourself up for a lifetime of overwhelm. And if you don't get your business set up to work smarter, to get organized, to run smoother with less effort, you will constantly be chasing your tail and waiting for busy season to end so you can finally catch your breath. And I know I say this because I have been there. I know what it's like to be working around the clock and staying up until 2 a.m. because there is no other way it'll all get done. I know what it's like to neglect self-care and sleep and time with your loved ones for the sake of your business. I used to hate the phrase just 30 more minutes because I felt like I was saying it all of the time. And if that feels like your current reality, you do not need to keep spinning your wheels or working late nights or saying no to things you want to do to your family members for the sake of running a successful business because you can really have your entire business running like a well-oiled machine in a matter of days and all of that is possible inside Photography Workflow Mastery 2.0 because what we went over, I wish I had hours and hours and hours upon end to teach all of this to you guys, but what we went over today is the tip of the iceberg and you can go run with all of that, do all the work, create your workflows, create your systems, your templates, you can do all of that, but all of that is inside Photography Workflow Mastery. And I'm going to publish this in the chat so you guys can check this out. But Photography Workflow Mastery is my signature flagship course. It is an eight module video based course with PDF workbooks. If you like printing things out and checking things off, that serves as your one stop shop to doing what you love faster and easier. It is an A to Z transformative step-by-step -step system that is going to save you time, get your business organized like a well-oiled machine, give your clients a better experience, and give you your freaking life back because running a photography business does not need to be hard. It doesn't need to take time away from your family. And my ultimate goal as an educator is to help you do what you love faster, easier, and more streamlined than you ever thought possible because I want you guys to have balance finally in your life. So if you are wondering what the heck is inside this magical course of goodness, I will give you a rundown of every module on the next few slides and feel free to pop your questions into the chat as well as I go through this. If you have any questions on the content on the course, I will be more than happy to answer. Bridget can flag those as a question for me in there, but this is really everything you need to run a streamlined business on a silver silver platter. That is exactly um, the best way I could describe it. So in module one, we talk all about creating a solid business foundation for long-term success. So we go through the 11 core building blocks of your business foundation. We go through how to set up and maximize your client management software without the overwhelm. We go through the best business advice I ever received that led to saving thousands of hours a year and the easiest time management tricks to help you cut your work hours down by 40% or more. Um, I just want to see what Shannon wrote. I can validate the importance of systems and the team. It's priceless. Personal life made me put all of this on hold for a season, but I'm looking forward to getting back to this place. Six figures in my situation cannot be achieved without systems and a team, in my opinion. I bet Laura systems can help all of us. Oh, thank you, Shannon. I feel like, um, I mean, 
I don't know what exactly your situation is, but without systems, yeah, six figures is really hard because you have to cap your growth um, and cap the amount of clients you take on. But I was able to do that without a team for years. So I ended up not hiring a team until I started my second business. And it was revolutionary. And now I'm able to run three businesses in the same amount of time it used to take me actually less time than it used to take me to run one business. And so I love that comment. Um, so that is module one, creating a solid business foundation for long term success, even without a team. In module two, you guys will learn the how to create workflows for just about anything. So we'll go through an even more in-depth step-by-step process for creating a great workflow that doesn't just save you time, but it gets you booked out. We'll talk about how to get off the hamster wheel and streamline every aspect of your business so you can focus on the important tasks and the important people in your life. We'll talk about how I doubled my income while working half the time and why and how your workflow will become your greatest marketing tool. And it really comes down to that restaurant example. In module three, we talk about converting inquiries to booking. So I don't want you guys to just like have this streamlined business. I want you to have a profitable business that is actually getting bookings. And so we talk through my entire inquiry process what I say in my emails, the secrets to an amazing consult, how to stand out amongst thousands of other photographers in your area, how to reduce getting ghosted, how to get people onto a call and a meeting. And so module three is literally all about converting your inquiries into actual paying clients. And module four is all about taking those new paying clients and nurturing them in your booking, your onboarding, and your client experience. So we will talk about the most often overlooked part of your workflow and how this will make or break trust with your clients from the get-go. We'll talk about how to turn every client into a raving fan so your business has a network of referrals and not just you having to market your business alone. And we'll talk about how your workflow will improve your client experience so you can serve your clients well no matter how busy you are. Um, Tracy, this is wedding and portrait photographers. Um, If you are not either one of those, let me know in the comments exactly what you do. I know you probably said in the beginning, but I totally lost the beginning chat. Um, We've had many other non-photographers join the course and see tremendous value. We actually just had somebody join who was a wedding, um, a brand and website designer, finished the course, implemented so much. So there are about six out of the, there's eight modules and two bonus modules. Um, and I would say at least six out of the, those 10 are going to be applicable so brand photography awesome it'll totally work there is one module that is just wedding specific but brand photography is my new bread and butter um so this will totally benefit you we're working on um, putting all my brand workflows into here as well in the bonus documents um, and my brand questionnaires as well um, so they weren't in the last release but they're going to be up there in a few weeks we just found some new tools that we're implementing that i want to update so yes it will absolutely work for brand photography in module five Deanne, so this will work for you as well. We go through the engagement and portrait workflow. So we talk about how to prepare your clients for their portrait session so that they feel confident and you get amazing images every time. We will go through everything from the pre-portrait workflow to the post-portrait workflow. So we'll go through my signature culling method that will have you flying through sessions in five minutes or less. We'll talk about how to write blog posts in 15 minutes or less, even if you hate writing, how to edit and deliver a full gallery in an hour or less. So like I said yesterday, I took my best friend's family slash maternity photos. We finished the photos at 442 and I was sitting at her kitchen table doing this while she was making dinner and I finished them at 442 I had them delivered to her in her email by 533 and so we will I will walk you through exactly how I do that so that you are not getting bogged down by your portrait sessions and then in module six this is really 
um, a wedding related module. So we talk about wedding day timelines and family formal lists and how to create those in a matter of minutes so that your wedding day is smooth and stress free. We'll talk about the essential steps you need to implement to ease your client's stress leading up to the wedding day. The most important tips for photographing the wedding day that'll have your clients, their friends, and their family raving about you, and my step-by-step -step workflow for creating same-day slideshows. And then module seven is the big kahuna. This is the post-production module for weddings. This is a long one because I screen record my calling process, my editing, my blogging, my SEO process, um, my album design process. So we go through my calling and editing secrets that will shave hours off of post-production, how to deliver weddings in a week and never have more than two in your queue at a time, even if you don't wanna work with an editor. We have not worked with an external editor outside of our team in over a year, and we are still delivering everything in that time. We'll talk about the blogging and marketing system I go through for every single wedding to ensure maximum reach and exposure. The simple tips to sell albums with ease and add thousands of dollars to your bottom line. Um, I think about 90% of my couples get albums, so I teach my process for selling them, for designing them, for changing the design and working with comments. And so we go through my whole A to Z album design workflow as well. And then the last module is streamlining and automating everything. So really the phase three here is what's taught in module eight of exactly how to take everything we created, the workflows, the systems, and put them into your CRM without losing your personal touch. And we'll also talk about how to create processes that'll help you scale, whether you are solo or growing a team and run your business like a well-oiled machine. And ultimately this goal is to help you never feel like a hot mess ever again. Um, and the cool thing is that's just all the course content. That's the video content, but you guys are going to get all of, all of my resources with it. So you'll get, um, my complete wedding workflow is literally a 15 page Google Doc that is ready for you to plug and play into your CRM. It literally that screenshot I showed you, that was a little snapshot of it, but you will get my complete wedding workflow, my portrait workflow, my album design workflow. Tracy will definitely be adding my brand workflow in there. You will get all of the questionnaires I use. So wedding day questionnaire, newborn family, maternity, relationship, timeline, engagement session questionnaire. We'll add in my brand questionnaire, and then you'll also be getting my family shot list template and my timeline template systems, as well as my wedding photographer's playbook. So this is all taught in module seven in the post-production module, but this is my complete guide to post-production for wedding photographers. Um, again, this is all taught in video form in module seven, but a lot of people I know like a little companion guide. So this is a, actually a 135 page PDF that you can print off and it'll tell you every single step in the order that I do it for post-production and the actual standard operating procedure for how to do it as efficient as possible. So it is pretty kick-ass um, if I do say so myself. This resource alone has helped people cut 30 hours off of wedding post-production, um, which is just like totally mind blowing to me. Um, and super cool. So that's the playbook. And then there are two bonus vaults. So a tech vault and the HoneyBook vault. And Tracy, yes, this is a self-paced program. Um, and so it is released all at one time. Um, so you get access to everything all at once, all the downloads all at once, and you are able to go through um, at your own pace. We've had people literally um, join very recently. They had the whole course done and implemented in five days, like their HoneyBook has been set up in, within five days of buying the course. Um, we've had people literally stay up till 2 a.m. the night of getting the course and have all of their workflows and templates implemented into their CRM. And then they went back and watched all the videos um, to actually learn how to do it efficiently. And there is a Facebook group as well. So yeah, if you have questions, I'm always in the Facebook group. I answer every single question that I receive from students. And then we also occasionally, if a lot of people have questions and ask for it, then we'll do Zoom calls and we'll just do like a group office hour type of call. So 
um, we, me and both Bridget, my team member, we are always available to answer every single question, even if you need to hop on like a short 15 minute call because you're stuck, we're available for that too. Um, on occasion, like once a month, we'll open that up if you have questions. And so totally available for support. Um, and then these two bonus vaults that we have is the tech and the HoneyBook vault. Even if you don't use HoneyBook, doesn't matter. All of the course will be geared towards whatever CRM you guys use. But the tech vault will help you set up and use Calendly to automate your scheduling, Planoly to plan, schedule, and execute your Instagram strategy, co-schedule to schedule all the other social media and blog posts, without even going on social media. It'll teach you how to automate your mileage tracking, have better team communication, how to streamline your inbox so that's not a chaotic nightmare, and how to use different productivity apps to save hundreds of hours a year. So this is really just like a productivity and app tech vault for how I use everything that I use in my business. Um, most of them are all f like free apps or like a low monthly subscription. They're not required by any means to use, but I just wanted to show you how I use every single thing that I talk about within the workflow. And they'll all make you way more efficient. Um, and then the HoneyBook Vault includes videos on how to use the contact form, brochure, questionnaires, email templates, workflows, and the task manager. And so all of this, so you got the full course, you got all of my workflow checklists, all of my questionnaires, my wedding photographer's playbook. You actually also get 50% off HoneyBook for your first year if you want to try that out. Um, and access to our private student Facebook group where, like I said, I always have support and access to our tech vault and our HoneyBook vault. So this is all valued at 26 67. This is not at all what you guys will pay. Um, and what's really cool, we have heard people loud and clear that they, you know, they need a streamlined business, but they also need a business that helps them get booked out with clients. And so we actually, um, by we, I mean me, I did 12 exclusive interviews with industry leading experts on every topic I could think of that will help you skyrocket your, your bookings. So we actually have a vault that is available. If you get in the course within the next 24 hours, you get access to this expert interview series vault. And this has a about an hour each interview um, on covering everything from client experience to get booked out, using Instagram, creating vendor relationships, using Facebook ads, creating a beautiful website design, copywriting that sells, second shooting to grow your business, creating a killer inquiry system, branding tips, and just straight up real life advice from people who have been in the industry for years. I interviewed um, 12 people. So Vanessa Hicks, Michelle Harris, Joy Michelle, Jess Jordana, Tori Kellner, Jen Larson, and so many more. There's like six, six more. And this by alone would end up costing $2,500 to do individually coaching with everybody. Um, but everybody said yes to giving you guys access to this for free when you join in the next 24 hours. So that whole vault, 12 interviews, is available to you on all of these different topics to help you skyrocket your bookings. Because I really view everybody is kind of in two boats. They're either starting out still trying to get clients and they need these systems and they also need booking systems to help them go full time, reach that six figure mark, or you're in the boat where you have so many clients, you are burnt out, you are spinning your wheels, you are just drowning and treading water to keep up. So I wanted to make sure that we had resources available no matter which boat you find yourself in. And so that total value then is $5,167. Um, literally, it would cost you $2,500 just for those coaching calls. But you guys don't have to even pay half of that, not even a quarter of that. Normally, this course is $697. But we have this week only for only our workshop attendees, the entire course and 
all of the bonuses are included for $200 off, which means there are three options that can get you in and get you immediate access to all the bonuses, the full course, and all of the skyrocket your bookings bonus if you join in the next 24 hours. And so you have the option for a pay in full $497, a six month payment of $87 a month, or if this year has been crazy for your business and next year is about to be even crazier because now you have to shoot double. Um, we also have a 12 pay option to help out this year, which is just $44 a month. So you can literally enroll today for $44. You will not have limited access to anything. You have full access to the whole course, all the bonuses, and they're all available to download. So like you don't, so like Tracy was saying, um, you use HoneyBook, but there's nothing in it. There's no clients yet. You literally get access to every single template that is in my HoneyBook. All of my questionnaires, all my workflows, my timeline templates, family formalist templates, those are in a Google Doc. Um, and then you guys also have the option to get all of my email templates. So I have written 110 email templates in the eight or nine years that I've run my photography business for my entire wedding workflow, my portrait workflow, my album workflow. And when you join the course, there's going to be an option on the thank you page to add all 110 email templates for $97. And that is going to be what allows you to implement this entire course in like a day. Um, you can watch the course. Um, there's about 19 hours of content in the course. Um, there's a roadmap for my suggested time frame for doing this and how long each module is going to take. Um, but if you get all of the email templates as well, you could literally have all your workflows, your emails, your questionnaires all implemented in like four to five hours. Um, and Shannon, yes, um, the $44 option is just a 12 month payment plan. So it's $44 a month for 12 months. You don't have limited access at all. It's just um, just an easier, easier way to get in. Um, and so we wanted to make sure that we gave that option of a longer extended payment plan because we know that cash flow has just been like really crazy and all over the place for the industry this year. And so that's just a, a 12 pay option. Um, but you can also pay in full if like I personally always prefer to pay in full just so it's like out of sight, out of mind. Um, so there's that option for $4.97. Um, and with the course, I am somebody who I love workbooks. I love when people give me a take action checklist of what to do. And so my team and I created workbooks for every single module. Um, I really pulled out every time in the slides or in the video that I said, like, this is something that you should be doing. This is something that you should be implementing. Um, I wrote it in the workbook and gave you a take action checklist. Um, so Tracy, if you do one of the payment options, will the email template for 97 need to pay all that up front? So if you get the course for like $44 a month, um, then the only other thing that was is a pay in full is the 97. So it'd be 44 plus 97 today um, if you got the email templates with it as well. Um, but if you um, didn't get the email templates, then it's just the 44. So you don't need to pay in full in order to get the email templates. Um, so hopefully that answered that. Um, but yeah, so we created a workbook for literally every single module um, of exactly what to do. There's notes in it. So if you are taking notes Typically throughout courses, this is really going to be the summary of every single module with a take action checklist. So we really tried to make this as easy as possible to digest. I know that workflows and systems are not the sexy topic, but the result that they have on your life is so freaking awesome. And when you implement all of this, your success is inevitable time freedom is inevitable. And I want to hopefully inspire you from some of my past students. And like I said, you guys, I am an accidental educator. Now I've been, you know, teaching 
uh, you know, we've grown a community of a couple thousand photographers um, that I am so proud are getting to live their lives and have time freedom while running a business they love. And Beth is one of them. She is a mom to Connor. She so Connor's, I think, going on three years old now. And she got in the course in February and she said, I just have to tell y'all what we learned yesterday is life changing. I got the course, began working last night. And even though I stayed up till 2 a.m., sorry, I actually put in five new questionnaires, made proposals and all the package templates in Dubsado that will make my work flow so much faster. Can't wait to get my hands on the email templates from Laura and work on that, too. This is so freeing. If you didn't get the course, go do it now. And then she messaged me after this and she said, what you've done is one of the hardest things I've ever seen to have the patience to write out all those workflows and all the email templates. I can't wait to see where you go with the course. This is the most confident I've ever felt in investing something I know will see clear results to improving my life and business. And then she said, I sat my computer down and went outside with Connor in the snow today because I know there's change coming. And that is when I started crying <laughs> because I was just like so freaking proud and so happy that her two to three year old son is not going to see her mom, his mom's laptop more than her face. And I know like Hannah, I don't know if Hannah's still in here. She said she has four kids and she would love to be able to take a vacation with them. And I'm sure that they would also just like everyday time with you as well. Um, and Tracy, I'm glad you find this beneficial. Um, I think Tina is another awesome student testimonial. She had the whole course implemented in two weeks and she she didn't even tell me this in the Facebook group. I like I was messaging her on Instagram and she was like, oh, yeah, girl, I'm on a month long sabbatical in Colorado right now because I implemented the course. And now my business is basically running itself. I was like, um, holy crap, please tell everybody this. And so she went to Colorado with her family, took a one month sabbatical and she has been a photographer for 10 years. She said it's one of the best investments I've made in 10 years running my wedding photography business. Since incorporating her email templates and methods, it feels like my business almost runs itself. Out of all the education I've purchased, this was by far the easiest to get through and provides actionable steps to actually get it done. I'm pretty sure I finished watching the videos of the course in no more than two weeks because I was hanging on to every word and wanted to absorb it all. Overall, I'm more productive, more motivated, my clients are happier, and I've been given back this precious gift called time. And then Matthew and Brittany, they're awesome as well. Um, I won't read all this, but Matthew <laughs> had implemented the entire inquiry and wedding workflow in Dubsado within a day of logging into the course. And he then posted in the group and said, since implementing the inquiry workflow, we've booked two weddings. Last week they inquired and we booked them. And that was within a week of getting the course. So not only um, will this help you streamline and make your business more efficient, but it also has all of my booking tips in that inquiry module. And so Matthew ended up 10xing his investment on the course within a week of getting in. So I thought that was really awesome. And Sarah went from one to 17 weddings um, just with that inquiry module. That was literally just with um, what I teach in module three. And so what I want to point out, if you know, there are a lot of you still here, um, the flood in your business is coming. So obviously this year, caused a lot of reschedules, a lot of cancellations, a lot of mess up to our cash flow. But that means, so we, we talked about your capacity being mapped out. If, you're, if your time is capped with out streamlined systems, we talked about how that inhibits your growth. And there have been so many conversations on Facebook talking about what are people going to do next year because are you going to take on more weddings, take on more portrait clients to, you know, help sustain the loss of income this year? Or are you just going to cap at your normal rate? And so many people are choosing to take an income hit because they feel like there's not another option. But the other option is to get streamlined and get efficient so that you don't need to do that. Um, I need to take on way more weddings than I normally would in order to make up um, the email template or 
to make up all of the income loss from this year. And so 2021 and 2022 are going to be very busy for wedding and photography industry. And I feel like a lot of people are going to feel like this when they are photographer A and they're not streamlined and they're working 50 to 70 hours a week and they are shooting more than double what they're used to. Um, There will be a lot of people who feel like this, who are just treading water, trying to keep their head afloat. And there are going to be a lot of people who feel like Haley Steinfeld, who joined the course, and they are running like a well-oiled machine. And just as a caveat, in case you were wondering, there is also no risk to you. We have a 90-day money-back guarantee. Literally, we give you 90 days to try the course and prove to yourself that it'll deliver the results that I'm promising. And if it doesn't, you can literally email my team and we will happily refund you. Um, There is one catch. You have to show me that you took the course and you did the work and you implemented your workflows because literally no course, no ebook, no product, no service is going to work unless you use it, which means that you can't just like request a refund because you want to purchase some other shiny thing that popped up. So if you purchase, you watch all the lessons, you download the workbooks and complete them. And in good faith, you tell me that you are not a better business owner. You don't feel more organized and you're not saving any time in your business. You can email me um, or my team within 90 days and we will refund your entire purchase. So If you're not planning on doing any work, um, then you can save your money (laughs) um, because we want people who are committed to taking action and to becoming better business owners, to streamlining their business and making their life easier. So we made it simple as pie. You can join today for $44. It'll be 12 payments. And then Tracy said, um, I'll answer your question. So the email templates are the emails that help nurture your list. No, they're not emails for an email list. They're emails for your workflow. So it's like when you get a inquiry and your contact form comes through, it's the inquiry email, all of the follow-up emails. It's the email that goes out when you send the proposal. It's the onboarding emails. It's the client education emails. It's the album design emails, the prepping your client for their portrait session emails, um, all of that. So it's every, every single email that's built into your workflow, but not anything to do with like an email list per se, like a flow desk or convert kit. It's everything that would be sent through your client portal. Um, and then Just as a caveat, um, when you guys join, you will be amongst students who are really across the board in their business. So Tori, um, she's an educator as well. She literally has like 15 mentoring clients a month. It's insane. And she was actually one of my first students in the course. And I love what she said. She said it is truly a one-stop shop for growing an unbelievable business. Uh, Laura explains everything from crafting robust workflows to offering incredible client experience. You're truly so lucky if you can start your business off with this course, but it's beyond helpful and practical for business owners a few years in as well. I know 10,000% that any offering Laura releases is packed with invaluable information to help business owners get their time and life back without sacrificing any aspect of their business. Um, And then Crystal, she put all the email templates in and she said, I started the workflow for my current wedding clients and I've gotten multiple emails already that they're blown away with my communication. And I've appreciated the extra efforts of checking in and sending vendor recommendations. Gosh, this year is going to feel amazing and I feel a major weight lifted off my shoulders already. And then my favorite, this is my first testimonial I ever received. So it's totally my favorite from Marquette. And she said, As a mom, wife, church volunteer, and photographer, I needed some serious help. My life was being spent staring at a screen and not with the people that meant the most to me. The first week after implementing Laura's workflow, I was able to cut 16 hours off of my post-wedding workflow alone. And the second week, I took 25 hours off. I made Valentine's Day treats with my kids instead of putting them in front of the TV and gluing myself to the laptop. That right there is worth everything to me. We've literally had people 
who are new moms or new dads, and they want to drastically cut their work hours down so that they can spend time with their um, a new baby. We've had people who are still working full time and they need to really be streamlined because 40 hours of their week are bogged down with their job. We've had people in business, I think 20 years as a photographer is the longest somebody in our course has been in business, which is amazing. We've also had educators who are killing it on the outside, but their business is a chaotic mess on the inside and they needed help in their photography business so that they could pursue education with more time. And if Hannah's still on here, like Karen is, Karen is up your alley. She has five kids and she was able to get everything she needed to get done, done um, for multiple weddings and sessions within a few days. And Jasmine is one of our students who went from delivering galleries in four to seven weeks to one week. Um, so that is amazing. She said the post-production module alone saved 10 to 30 hours of work a week. And so if you are a photographer and you are ready to go from overwhelmed to organized, this will give you freedom, sanity, and success in your business without hustling 24 seven. And I know there are still people here. And if you are, um, it is probably not because you just like hearing me talk. It is because you are seriously considering if this is something that you should invest in. And I want you to ask yourself this question. What is it costing you not to invest in your course or in this course? Um, is it costing you time with your family? Is it costing you a better client experience? Is it costing you time for self-care or vacation or happy hour with friends or time for hobbies? Um, time to just be. Um, that, that's really the question that I want you to ponder um, because I've been in your shoes. I have literally invested in over a hundred courses in the nine years of business. I literally treat business like I'm going back to college every year. Um, I love learning. Um, but the thing that has helped me the most, um, is getting my business to a place where I do not need to be on all of the time. And that is exactly what this course will do for you. And so if that is something and you really value free time freedom, um, and you value having time to spend with your family, to do the parts of your business you love. Um, again, you're probably not still here because you just like listening to me talk. Um, so I really want you to ponder that. Um, what is it costing you? What is the cost of inaction? Because there's always going to be an investment, right? There's always going to be this monetary investment and this cost of action, but there's also a huge cost of inaction when we have the solution to our problems at our fingertips and we don't say yes to them. Um, so I just want you guys to imagine how incredible it would be to have time to hang out with your spouse, your friends, to travel, to relax, to have time guilt-free because all of that is possible. And the year that I implemented this, like I said, I literally took 58 days off. Me and my husband flipped a house, uh, completely gutted, renovated our house. I never would have had time for that if I didn't have these systems in place. I started a second business. We had date night almost every single week on top of shooting 28 weddings and 40 sessions that first year. And I want you to imagine having clients rave about you to all of their friends and the potential that this would have not just on your business, but your life. Because if you want to work smarter and you want to actually spend time with your family, your friends, and have a chance to relax, you need a smart system in place to make that happen. And Photography Workflow Mastery, the signature course that's been around for a few years now, we're on the 2.0 version, always improving it. And this course is that system. And as a um, little bonus, if your hands are cramping up from taking notes, the workbook will also be available to download and Bridget's going to send this in an email too. So um, if you're listening to 
the replay or you have to hop off. That workbook will be available for download. I'll also share it in the chat box. Um, so you can download the workbook. This will just have a summary of everything we went over. Um, but yeah, if you guys literally have any questions at all about the course, about workflows, about systems, about time management, um, let me know, drop them in the comments, and I am more than happy to answer. And I just wanted to say thank you again so much for hanging out with me. I hope that this was really valuable. I hope you got a ton out of the content we went over today. Um, and then I really hope that you have some tips to implement to help you have some time freedom in your life again. So drop your questions, let me know. And if you guys don't have questions, then I will let you hop on with your day. But I know there's a delay, so I will wait uh, a minute. And I'm going to stop screen sharing too. Woo, my face is getting hot. Awesome. Okay, I'm gonna wait like 30 more seconds for the delay if there are questions, but if there's not, then all good. Okay, perfect. I am going to hop off. It looks like we are all good. Shannon, you are so welcome. Hope to see you inside, Tracy. Hope to see you inside, and Deanne. And Floor, if you are still on, I know you said you are accounting. Um, we do also do custom workflows and implementation for all types of business owners. Um, and we'd be happy to have a one-on-one -on -one chat with you to help too. I don't know if you are still on, Floor, but um, happy to help with anybody who needs custom help as well. So thanks, guys. Have a great night.